Welcome back to the absolute most professional StarCraft to the grand finals of ESL Summer, the premier championship, one of the largest tournaments of the year. Which means I am incredibly excited to introduce this Terran player who battled it through and deserves his place in the spotlight. The last Mac Terran. It's Gumiho. But he's got quite a challenger on the other side. This one not as surprising, though still exciting. The finisher! It's Cyril, looking to re-secure his place as the most dominant player in StarCraft II history. Gumio has his work cut out for him, and Cyril... We'll see if he considers it another day at the office, or maybe... something extra special. We haven't really seen this matchup before, but I'm excited to see what Brumiho brings to the table. He has that extra flavor. He has that, that creativity and that pragmatic Terran that honestly, I don't, I don't really think anyone else does. He specializes in being in the right place at the right time, as opposed to his microing his way out of a bad situation. So if you like something a little different, if you're excited like I am, I'm completely unbiased, but I'm rooting for Gumiho. If you enjoy all those things, be awesome if you could like and subscribe. Jimmy, you know what? No, it's the finals. If we could get 1,500 likes on this video, then I'll cast another series, though it's going to be hard to uh, top the excitement of this one. 1,500. Um, and maybe maybe we'll do an extra. No matter how this ends, I want to do more Gumi games. Uh, always exciting to watch. Not that Cyril isn't, but Cyril... Um, it's kind of like, uh, it's like watching someone play GTA while following the traffic rules, okay? Technically, you can do that. It's not, it's not the most exciting thing, though Cyril has a tendency to branch out. Being the best player, obviously, is worth watching. Um, but he already has a Roach Warren to start out here in game one. The very first unit. First. Wait, okay. Well, I guess a couple Zerglings and a Marine have gone down, but... The first meaningful... Okay, not that Marines and Zerglings are not meaningful. The first unit that costs Vespi gas. There. I'll, I'll settle on that one. Kumiho with the, um, poor man's Viking. The Medivac with some Marines. He did have a, a Cyclone as well. Has he spotted the Roach one? No. But with the Cyclone and Banshees on the way, I don't think he's in a terrible spot when it comes to defending early on, as these are, are kind of an anti-roach setup. Also, this is more of a defensive style. Dark has made his impact, uh, unable to make it this far in the tournament, but uh, Cyril clearly taking some of the key parts of the early game there with the early roaches to zone things out. They're just a lot more supply efficient. Um, and as long as you're not up against, like, a straight-up double medevac play, you can get away with a lot more economic production while using the roaches to defend. Gumio sniped off. Three overlords thus far with his cyclone vac. Still working the edges of the main. Meanwhile, Cyril and Gumiho all adding on their upgrade facilities. we got Evo Chambers, Engineering Base, Third Command Center. Gonna land on location. More barracks on the way, so no mech this time around from Gumio. He's really been favoring that marine tank style uh, against Zerg lately. Banshee is with Cloak. Banshee is revealed. Uh, not sure how much that's going to really affect Cyril's outlook here. He already has a lair done. Did not start Roach Speed yet. I imagine that is moments away. He starts Zergling Speed. But Roach Speed can't be too far off. As he's built so many Roaches, he's, he's going up to about 15. Gumiho is now spinning up his production. Is that a second factory? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is uh, the Gumiho we know and love. That Hellion's coming in roasting half a dozen drones. Adding a few more to the total. Transfuses a drone. What a save! It's eight. And, uh, okay, Scout. Still no Roach Speed from Cyril. So, a curious... There we go. Uh, we actually just forgot it. Warming up. Game one. Even Cyril is affected by it. 
75 drones to 65. Just working around the edges both sides so far. Nothing too untoward. Kind of kind of crazy to get royal blood out of the way in game one. As this is, is probably our most dramatic macro map. Uh, Gresvin can be a very back and forth long term map. But it hasn't really had the... Uh, bloody late games that royal blood does not okay that was uh no puns intended i guess wow the cloak banshees the delayed cloak banshees i'm busy stumbling over my words while the banshees rip through the mineral lines i d 13 drones the timing is everything as as Cyril knew there was a banshee but i think he just assumed it was for defensive purposes only two banshees come in start slicing through drones in a single volley and Cyril just didn't have any detection at his natural didn't expect to need to defend banshees at the seven minute mark and now gumiho actually has an economic lead while going in to a fourth command center his income is going to be completely capable especially with mules he's got medevacs on the map in order to maintain his position and keep Cyril busy not allowing him to bounce back too much economically Cyril already has a couple infestors out uh, Gumiho, not a huge fan of ghosts, by the way. Uh, he rarely uses them, even in the late game. Maybe when push comes to shove uh, a few times over. Oh, beautiful fungal to start things off from Cyril. But those marines are still intact. Gumiho forgot combat shield. Oh, no. Oh, it's not even started yet. Both players with a little bit of a hiccup in the early game production, but combat shield is a huge deal. Having combat shield is like missing all th not missing combat shield is like missing all three armor upgrades combined. Yeah, he starts it now. But that is definitely a big mistake going into this stage of the game where each of those marines could have 20% more HP. The setup here, production line is the way to describe Gumiho. He's the Factorio Terry. Even if he's not so adamant about going mech, he's all about mass production. I think that's how he got so far into the finals of ESL Summer. And for now, holding his own. But Cyril already has a hive done. Lurker's on the way. Lurker range in production. A fifth command center. Gonna be canceled, it looks like, by a group of Zerglings. Banshee's still going, by the way. Gumio keeping it together. Banshee's on the left. Queens will be dragged there. The tank line holding. Actually scans and kills the Overseer that was sieged up on the high ground there. Zerglings come back around. Actually, a little supply block sale there, 192. Another command center canceled. A few roaches making their way into the third. I think this is Cyril trying to get rid of some of his supply in an efficient manner so we can rebuild those lurkers. And indeed, there it is. And she will come back and eventually deal with the roaches. Has Cyril not seen that planetary on the left side? He has not yet spotted that base, and I planted that. That may very much be factory in the Cerro's calculations. Right now, he thinks he has Gumio pinned on three bases. But a four base Terran is much scarier. He has the ability to keep his production and potentially add more while still upgrading in all of that. And with only three bases, production itself is difficult, especially at this stage of the game. Drop comes in towards the main. The many spores put together to try to prevent exactly this, but the Marines are able to gun most of them down. And now Gumio drank the army out of position. Just blast through the hatchery in the center. Baneling Nest is not yet done. Cyril needs to be in position with his lurkers, otherwise he's not gonna have the DPS to break through the tank line. Oh God, the tank count is too damn high. Gumiho blasting through the front. Drop comes back in towards the main. Banshee's still part of the action here, adding DPS and killing the lurkers off. Where are the Vipers? The Infestors throws out a fungal, doesn't find much. Lurkers will burrow. And without medevacs here, Gumiho, he's even got a turret. This is Gumiho's specialty. The Tactical Terran. He's outmaneuvering Cyril right now. Cyril's lost most of his creep. He's pinned back to his bases. Gumiho still has four command centers, but the fifth just finished up. Right now, without these high tech upgrades kicking in, Gumi Ho is running Cyril around the map. The cost of efficiency is real. Cyril's lost a couple thousand more minerals. The tanks are getting into a, a nasty position here that's going to require the Vipers to yank them out of. Gets one. Yanks another. Down by the little pavilion there. 
the Costco food court. Where are the medevacs? Five of them. One of them in the main. I'm not sure where the rest are, but a glaring lack in the center of the map. And Gumiho gonna back off. Still no... Oh, there is a ghost academy. And a couple ghosts on the way. So Gumiho acknowledging that those Zerg spellcasters could use a little bit to keep them in check. The lurkers making their way across. Cyril has held the line. Not known to bow easily to anyone. Maybe Zerg, but... <laughs> Adaptive talons completed. Lurkers fully upgraded. Lur and Will Burrow. Blinding Cloud. Knocks out most of the tanks there. Four. Negated from the fight. The triple bile. Take out three more. Medivacs forced to retreat. Hits the boost. Only Marines and Marauders will survive this, but Gumiho also trying to deal with Zerglings at the natural. The production is under attack. We've got lurkers on the left slicing through the economy. Zerglings are gutting the natural. And the main army has been thwarted as well. As Gumiho losing on three, make that four fronts, inclu including the game itself. As Cyril, he just rips him apart at the seams. It looked for a moment like Gumiho might be able to lay down a killing blow on the finisher in game one. But Cyril does not go down that easily. Oh, still, Gumiho showing a lot of strength. They're both players for getting some key upgrades for a little while. A bit of a warm up in game one, but shaping up to be a dramatic series. But so far, stylistic. Cyril just playing defense right up until he's very much not. Whereas Gumiho trying to get into position and uh, uh, leverage that into a victory with his siege tanks. Well, Jimmy, please. The grand, we can't have downtime in the grand finals. We don't have... No. Oh. Game two. Cyril up to a 1-0 lead. We're going into Ancient Sister. I was so excited to see Gumiho made it to the finals. All right, he deserves it. He works so hard. I love his style. Um, though, once again, it, it does clash heavily with Cyril's. Like, Cyril is just so good. I, his mechanics, the speed and precision is just too much in many cases. You can assume what he's doing is the correct way to play. Gumiho, uh, I, I think may have benefited from a little bit more defensive style. Like, as he was able to... Like, he, he did the attack over to the right, the drops. But he kept trying to press the issue with no ghosts, no liberators up against the infestors and vipers. Which against a lesser zerg... Essentially anyone who is in Cyril or Dark, probably. Uh, may very well eventually work because they might get a few of your tanks, but they're just not going to have the cost-efficient fights and you'll grind them down. But, I've said Dark is, is like a hockey player and Cyril's like a surgeon. Cyril just excises the important parts of your army with his spell casters. Dark will body check you out of the way. You see, the only disappointment here is that Dark can make it. But, uh, if it gives us Gumiho... I'm more than happy. But there you saw. At no point did he have more than two, maybe three vipers? Two, maybe three infestors? Just, uh, the extra, the side dish there that really ties the whole thing together. Uh, just enough to make sure Gumiho can break through. Those counterattacks so well timed as well. So hard to deal with. If they're paying real attention. Well. Game two, game two. I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this a bit. <clears throat> this game was recommended so much individually. I don't know why. People pretty good about not giving spoilers. But this game was recommended so much individually, I debated casting it on its own. Um, as a standalone. New game of the year. Now, I don't know. It's been bantered around. People use the, those words. Now, I, I will not apologize for titling multiple games Game of the Year, sometimes from the same tournament. 
because it's a certain level of quality. Uh, and at the end of the year, uh, we're going to get together and pick out the best game of the year. And by me, I mean probably some Dutch content creators uh, in StarCraft 2. Like, winter. That doesn't narrow it down. <sighs> Region locked the Netherlands. Anyways. Um, or, I don't know. Build a moat. <clears throat> but, I'll be the judge of that. Um, Gumiho starts off once again with the Marine Vac. I like that compromise. Vikings historically have been used to take out the Overlords, but um, the Vikings not well known for taking out early game pressure or dealing with early game pressure. So the Marine Medivac is kind of your middle ground between the ability to deny scouting and also have units to deal with early attacks, which has historically been the issue for Terran players who want to get those three command centers or so out early. Stim already done, by the way. A bit of a meandering two medevac build, but um, very quick in the grand scheme of things. Odd chase to, to hunt down an overlord, but we'll take it out. Serral actually supply blocked. 90 out of 90, but he's got, of course, a couple more of he's about to complete. Gumio, third command center at the natural, not as quick as it could be. More focused on getting that barracks production up. Serral just now starting his fourth hatch uh, over at the six o'clock. So Gumiho not going to be able to pressure that directly from the angle he's landed here over on the left. But still a dangerous amount of Marines. All right, Serral's trademark Zergling gets into the main. Spots the timing of the third command center. Bane speed is about halfway done. So far, uh, relatively passive. As Gumiho's worked around the edges of the creep, losing exactly zero units. Um, whereas, ta only taking out a few Zerglings himself, but... Still, supplies grow. Plus one Carapace on the way for Cyril. Adding on another Evo Chamber, plus one melee, I assume, momentarily. Combat Shield, Baneling Speed. Nobody forgetting anything in this game. Drone count heading towards 70. Megumi Ho now going to be stepping onto the creek. Siege tank jammed into a quite a difficult position to dislodge. Especially this game, there are no Ravagers with corrosive buff. So, while uh, those are an expensive choice, they are also quite good at dismantling those siege positions if you're able to get close. Oh. Gumi Ho, wow, he scans it, sees nothing. He smells danger. He's like, uh oh. This seems like a danger zone. I don't. <laughs> he, I can't believe that, that, that game sense right there. Scanning, seeing nothing, and immediately retreating. Now. It doesn't take a, a, too much of a complicated equation there, but clearly the units are somewhere else, and you need to deal with that. Raises the depot at the natural, counterattack. A few banelings rolling in. He may be able to blast his way. Oh, that's more than a few. Another round into the natural. Enough survive that the SCVs are on the run. Gumiel still, most of his army on the other side of the map. The banelings are making their way up, but the siege tanks are just enough to shut them down. Meanwhile, Gumiho tearing through the hatchery to the 6 o'clock. Lifts a couple tanks up to the high ground. Get a better position on the lings and bangs. The marines may be forced to retreat all the way off the creep, but going to split and stim and still hold for now. Gumio not losing a critical mass yet. There's still one more siege tank on the low ground. Lings and bangs looking for the wraparound. The medevac's pretty far off. Is the target fire there? There's enough left over that Gumiho actually takes a supply lead. It looked okay for Cyril, but at the end of the day, 94 Zerglings are taken out, which dramatically decreases Serral's ability to actually fight Gumiho's army on the field, especially off a of creep right now. The Banelings have to be rebuilt. The injects are minimal since most of the queens are pulled off the line. 
I may have, yeah, I lied about that one. Well, actually, no, not, not every queen is able to go back and inject at the moment. As Cyril has a tendency to pull everything to the fight if he thinks he needs it. Um, which usually works out, but right now, you can tell he's hurting in supply with this very zergling heavy composition. Banelings crash in. Yumiho's rotated around to the left. Siege tanks being boosted. No longer can they be moved while sieged, but he's beating them into a good position. Making sure their back is literally up against a wall to minimize the angles the lings can surround them from. Cyril struggling to keep his supply intact. He needs that critical mass to be able to overrun the marines and tanks. And right now he's not finding it. Goes for a counter attack. His SCV's mostly undefended here. But Gumio still should be able to take out what is now the fourth hatchery. Alright, just blasting through. Siege tank. Laying it down. More marines to the north. Trying to chase down the Zerglings, but the Zerglings playing hard to get. Another group. I don't know where he spotted these Banelings from. Oh, Gumio hasn't even put the SCVs back. The positioning on the depots. <clears throat> They're holding the line with the Marines. They'll expect some sacrifices, but the Marines holding position in that little area by the depot prevented the rest of the Lings and Banes from crashing through. And that's given Gumiho an opportunity to siege up a tank and resecure his third while continuing to maintain the pressure on the other side of the map. He's even got some liberators covering the siege tanks, making it incredibly difficult for Serral to actually dislodge these siege positions remotely cost effectively. The depot breadcrumbs out here as the walls have been ripped down and just uh, essentially uh, uh, distracting depots, trying to help and actually succeeding as the Zerglings on A move fighting the depots instead of closing the distance on the Marines. Gumio slicing into the heart of the swarm, looking for the Baneling Nest, but the, the Queens and their transfuses making sure that is not a possibility, but the siege tanks continue to encroach from the low ground. More Marines over to the right flank. Gumiho picks up and escapes at the last moment. Gets as many as he can out of there. The pressure continues. Cyril maintaining, approaching 500 APM. Gumiho at a cool 350. Always about quality over quantity. And right now the Baneling Nest goes down, but the surviving Banelings are heading towards the main. The natural is exposed, but Cyril clearly under so much pressure, not able to micro on every front as Gumiho has another group of Marines heading towards the natural. He picks up into the Metavex and he heads out. 24 SCVs. Um, um, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my, okay. All right. <sighs> Whoa. Finally. Mm. Don't tease me like that, Cyril. 34 SCV kills. Cyril loses the Baneling Nest. He loses most of his creep. His supply heavily hurt here in, in his army supply. But he still maintains enough. Got the positioning on those siege tanks. With the Liberators above, he's eventually going to dislodge. So the Banelings crash through. Gumiho. Holding it together. He still has 3-3 on the way. If he's able to get 3-3, 27 SCVs. 27. Even with mules, the disparity is dramatic. Cyril's not going to have a hive anytime soon. More links. Surround and kill yet another siege tank. The SCVs can't afford to be fighting out here. Gumio is sending most of his units across the map. A few reinforcements will clear up the counter-attacking Zerglings. Spots a few drones transferring, but well protected by the Lings and Banes. The Queen's trying to keep the creep at least together between the natural and the third. 3-3, three, three, still a minute out, but Gumiho cannot afford to keep his foot off the gas. He needs to just keep going, because if Cyril's ever given a chance to counter-attack, to regroup, to consolidate his forces, well then the chances of Gumiho being able to break through are minimal at best. Oh, the siege tanks being surrounded. The positioning is still amazing here, as Gumiho has absolutely minimized the opportunity for the Lings and Banes to break through. Meanwhile, out on the map, reinforcements cut off by Cyril's Zerglings. The Marines in autumn colors, as the Stims, the Lings, and the Banes. But here comes Cyril from every side, so Gumiho goes up. And he evacuates, but another attack. Over to the right. Gumiho dropping out. A bloody battle there as he's surrounded on the way out of the medevacs. Most of the marines will survive, though. A difficult fight. So far, not in the last three minutes. 300 Merglings 
and a hundred marines, five siege tanks have died. 3-3 three, three is completed though. So Gumiho's last hope are these upgrades here. The cost efficiency, he's kept enough medevacs intact. He has slightly more army supply, but almost no economy left. Gumiho has this one group of marines as he tries to break through his last chance in order to get any sort of foothold towards victory or get ground down towards defeat. The 3 3 Marines, if there are no Banelings, are immensely cost effective. One of the biggest upgrade disparities in the game. He really needs every bit he can get here. Another medevac shows up, try to save the Marines on the right side. Mings and Bane splitting the Marines. Gumiho's in the main as well. Zergling's counterattack blasting through. So many medevacs, but unfortunately, not that many Marines left over. But he's in behind the mineral lines. He's taking mo the mo- I just saw the minerals drop to zero. Never a good sign. Gumiho still though, 43 to 43 army supply. Serral dips under 100 supply himself. He's still got the medevacs. Drones are falling as the Marines find every little gap in the minerals and try to use them against the Zerg. Gumiho, reinforcements. I'm not sure who's flanking who here. The Zerglings find another surround. There's no walls left. He hasn't been able to rebuild any of the depots. More Marines. Zerglings making their way in. SCV count dropping to nearly the starting point. He's at 14. But the spawning pool. The spawning pool goes down. Serral can't build anything. The spawning pool is everything he has left. Only Banelings now. But Banelings might be enough. Gumiho down to two. One. Two SCVs! But Serral can't rebuild Zerglings! Gumio actually has more army supply right now! Is there- wait, did he get the Baneling Nest too? No, there's still a Baneling Nest, but without that spawning pool, this is such a- He actually can't- he can't build Queens, you can't build Zerglings, that's really all he's been working off of, besides the Banes themselves. Serral surprisingly not building too many more of that. But with two SCVs left, Gumiho, the hero marine, big game couldn't make it, but he's making a cameo appearance. Sell down to 50 supply. This gap in production. Gumiho! With two SCVs, he holds Cyril. He may have had the larva to rebuild the Zerglings, but with Mule still on the field, with Cyril having an income lead. Gumiho with Marines breaks through. Wow. Um, one of the most hectic. Remember, almost nothing died for six minutes. It was a pretty passive six, seven minutes. And then the next 10 minutes, over a thousand units. Well. Hmm. Oh yeah, we have some more games. Uh... <laughs> one to one. Gumio. The very ragged edge of defeat. Almost literally nothing left at home. But he doesn't stop fighting. Literally, the last Marines possibly that he could ever build deciding the match. Sniping the spawning pool at the most key possible timing. Uh, so, after such an epic, incredible game, if you know Korean Terrans, if you know their tendencies, if you know what they like to do to switch things up, then you tell me. Just get it in your mind. What I'm about to switch to for game three. What's going to be on the screen? You were correct. Gumiho with the proxy two Rex. Uh, quite a dramatic tone switch after two pretty much straight up macro games. We'll see. It is going to be a Reaper proxy just a little bit different the same themes apply but overall uh gives you a little more potential to macro it out back at home also a much greater potential to fail horribly the marine proxy isn't usually deadly 
but is almost impossible to break cost effectively if it gets entrenched. The Reapers, on the other hand, are much more micro-intensive, where you can use them to potentially outright win the game. But if you lose the Reapers, then you just never get to expand and probably end up losing shortly after. So, what's it gonna be? Sale knows at this point, by the way. The Reaper timing is incredibly clear. Reapers throw a few grenades. Pushes himself back. Spore. Spores used to block the kills here. How many has he gotten so far? Honestly, Gumi will getting a lot of progress without Pops the Queen. Here to protect the drones. But Gumio not letting up. The grenades continue to bounce. Both the queen and everything else around. No breathing room here. And this is how you have to play it. In every moment, you can be pressuring the Zerg. You cannot let Cyril get out of his base. You cannot let Cyril look anywhere else. As that is essential. Both queens came up. Brenda, how many times? Build a creep tumor. It takes a while, Susan. I can't believe you're blaming me for this again. How many times? It's been 13 years. I don't... Oh, oh my God. In the main now. Gonna... <clears throat> Sorry. Blacked out for a second. So that... Okay, Cyril finished the spine. Was it intentional? Did he mean to finish the spine? Because he did build a spine after uh, the spore cancels. And now he's using it like it was the plan all along. So I have to assume it was. The The Reaper count is now high enough to contest the Queen. He's got seven on the field. Oh, easily. Yeah, seven Reapers. More than enough to kill isolated Queens. If it wasn't for the Zerglings, then... Uh, it would be a potentially difficult position, but now Gumiho has done all he can do. I think he's done a good job of controlling Cyril's build, his economy. It wasn't a resounding success. He didn't get a huge amount of kills, but he can't be too disappointed. He still has a bunch of Reapers on the field, and there's enough... And he knows where the Overlord is. I'm sorry. One moment. He starts with the Reapers. But Gumio's gonna follow it up. With... Fusion Core! Going for the Battle Cruisers. About as dramatic a tech switch as you could ever get. The most expensive unit. Terrans can build the most dramatic option. And Gumi Ho pulling it out in game three of the grand finals. Yes, there's been some Reaper Hellions at the front, but the real action is about to be happening in the production tab as Gumi Ho brings back his trademark unit, the Battle Cruiser. A bold choice. We'll see if it works out for him. Using, oh my god. I was overshadowing this, but apparently the Reaper Hellion did enough damage to actually outright kill the third hatch. That's a huge deal. That's one less, er, one less hatchery to produce queens. A lair has started. And this is Cyril. Cyril's in, Cyril's already in a really rough spot. And he gets Yamato. Uh, it's gonna be double starport battle crew. Gumiho sees a potential advantage. And he's seizing it. The battle cruiser timing as a follow up versus Cyril. Mm hmm. -hmm. I wonder, like, he's masked it so well. It, I, I don't know if I've ever quite seen the full Reapers into battle cruiser. Well, it does. Battle Cruiser jumps to the main. The queens are completely and utterly out of position. Third hatchery just out of here. The barracks is finally burnt down. Hellions are. Oh, he didn't quite nail the positioning. Oh, the Hellions could have held the door. The Zerglings actually slip right back through. 
Battle Cruiser gets five kills. These are kills that Serral cannot afford at this moment. A handful of roaches out, but the Reapers are actually just winning the fight. Seven drones. The Reapers are still getting kills. The Battle Cruiser is still intact. There's no Spire on the way. There is no way to deal with the Battle Cruiser outside of a Spire. Right now, Gumio is building two Battle Cruisers at a time. So, Queens might be good, but they're not remotely good enough to deal with fully operational Battle Cruisers. Oh my. Yamato Cannon is complete. Maybe one or two, but Gumiho is going to have four battle cruisers against five queens. I don't know how Cyril expects to deal with these. Another cruiser jumps. Yamato Cannon fully operational. The queens are here, but there's no... <laughs> That's one answer. He sees the cannon spitting up. And Serral, with some great micro, manages to leave the game before it lands. Kumiho just Yamato cannon. Yamato cannon Serral. He blasted him into a 2-1 lead. Serral with no answer for the Reaper Cruiser. And against all odds and probably all bets, Gumiho gains a lead. Wow. Well, Sarah was not expecting that one. Well executed in every sense. Let's see if the momentum can carry forward as we go into match four. Babylon. How many times will you get away with it? I love that. I love that intense, incredible back and forth. You know what? I see why people say game of the year. That was a crazy game. Honestly, I, I have trouble saying game of the year with like uh, shorter matches, but that was the most hectic 10 minutes. One of the most hectic 10 minutes I've ever seen. Both players playing at the top of their game and then immediately followed up by that game. Gumiho just winning almost by default. Ah, oh, he breaks out the crew. He doesn't, he's not shy about it. Double Starport Yamato Cannon Battle Cruiser. Hmm. Go get him, Gumi. Gumi bro. Gumio, we went over this just a few days ago in uh, one of the many matches of Gumio versus Dark. Where uh, Gumio's been playing, he was in the he played random in the first season of gsl 2010 and he's been a a pro player like a regular staple of tournaments pretty much since then um though he he has rarely found the that upper tier like essentially rarely in the very finals he's approached it but he has been playing some of his best starcraft lately which is kind of crazy after all this time. So, totally deserved. I was... I was surprised, though not... unexpectedly. Like, it kind of felt like Gumiho was going to have a breakout performance. Uh, to see him in the finals. He definitely is at that level. But it's really good to see he actually made it. Especially in a, a foreign tournament here in, uh, held in Sweden. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. All right, I'll try. Yonkoping. No, nope, that's not it. Uh, uh, for ESL Summer. I'm not even going to try to pr tries anyways. Well, that was probably so far off you could argue I not, didn't even try. It's going to be Cyclone back. Once again, giving a falling back on that uh, half Viking style. Barracks. Looking for overlords. I like how willing he is to use the barracks as a scout. 
A lot of Terran players are shy about this, but barracks actually fly faster than overlords. Not that they can attack them, but uh, they make them very uncomfortable. I'd be like, well, that seems weird. Well, one of them has jet engines. One of them is a glorified tentacle balloon, so... Raven on the way. Handful of roaches here for Sarah. He's had 46 drones, so more of a, a defensive roach setup. Whoa, locks onto a queen. The queen sniping build here. This is kind of crazy. He gets it, and he gets out with all but one marine. Wow, okay. Just comes into Cyril's main, snipes off the queen and a few drones, and gets out. That is, uh, quite rude. I might say. And behind it, Cloak Banshee. Hellion's darting in, looking for opportunities. Trying to keep Cyril on his toes here. And, uh, well, where are the roaches? I have no idea where the roaches are, but I know where they're not, and that is a problem. Like, uh... Losing 12 drones feels kind of unnecessary. I have no idea where the roaches were going to be. But some of them probably dealing with the potential cyclone drop in the main, but go me hell. Finding some good damage. Heads all the way back. Probably going to get some repairs here. The cyclone already badly bruised. Going to heal up, repair. We go back out for another round. Well, Cyril may have lost a bunch of drones, but in the grand scheme of things, not a huge blow, as he already had three hatches all online. His injects, plenty of creep, so it's not a devastating economic deficit. Or deficit at all, really. <laughs> now, the first raven... We're seeing here. Infestation pit already on the way for Cyril. Four racks for Gumiho. As it's macro time for both sides. Both of them very ready to go into this full on macro game. Not trying to avoid it. Only last game did we see any sort of outright, eh, definitely a cheese. Double cheese, really. Uh, fancy cheese blend, but a cheese nonetheless. Right, this is going to be Roach Hydra. Which, seeing a resurgence, uh, I, I credit Dark, for the most part, for, for continually showing uh, how much more stable Roach builds can be compared to Ling Bane. We did see Cyril with Ling Bane, an ancient sister. And the problem is, you always need such a high level not necessarily of income, but of larva production, that it becomes difficult to maintain if the game goes a little sideways. Or you lose your spawning pool, but like... Um, the sheer level of production required to maintain the Ling Bane count you need is the vulnerability. It may be better for outright dealing with... or It's better for counterattacks. It's better for surrounds and... and um, just crushing armies, but its strength is also its weakness, the sheer amount of units uh, needed to do any of that. Whereas Roach Hydra is definitely not as exciting in the micro sense. It's, it's literally a, just a lot more HP to get through, a lot more meat that must be uh, dealt with, especially before the, the end game phase. Or the late game with Lurkers and Vipers. Wow. So just now getting Zergling speed. So Cyril choosing the uh, uh, brawnier style of Zerg. This time around. Kind of daring Gumiho to get something done before the Hive Tech kicks in. And that time is already passing. The Raven. Alongside the Cyclone Hellion. Last improve. Gumiho, 
No Ghost Academy. Gumio definitely, he made a couple ghosts, I believe, in game one, but definitely not rushing them. Uh, even against this sort of style. Has he seen the hive? No, he has not. Cell building is natural. I'm a personal fan of this. The amount of players who will build all their tech in their main, which is, by definition, the first place they want to abandon. Because you mine out of your main first, right? It's usually the furthest away from your army, which is on the middle of the field. So many players will build their entire tech tree in their main base, and then it gets cut off at the stump. So building it at the natural is usually the best balance between getting it in a timely manner and the most defensible location. So Cyril really embracing that here. Had enough of... I mean, the spawning pool is still in the main, but... Oh, Gumio's built quite a wall. Single siege tank. Apparently enough to get Cyril to turn around for now. Gumio's maxed out. Took him a little longer, but 2-2 two -two is on the way. So the timing window is open. It's up to Gumiho how he uses it. As he's up against ranged lurkers. There are vipers on the field, but with the raven here, giving anti-armor missile and more importantly detection uh, in this scenario. Able to keep it alive so far. Oh, a siege tank count, quite dramatic. It's got eight of them and counting. Plus one mech weapon, still pretty far off though. Lurker speed in speed burrow. Completed now. Adaptive Talons is done. Vipers. Just two of them. But those are several Vipers. Yanks out a couple tanks. Still has enough for a couple more abducts. Big attack from Gumio. Trying to come down the ramp, but the Lurkers are slicing through, eviscerating the Marine count. Gets another one. Gumio making progress. Working his way down to the bottom left. Siege tank in range. A brawny amount here of roaches, queens, and ravagers, but gets an empty armor missile, softens them up. Metavax, near the marines, yanks in another tank, slowly but surely dismantling the back line. Cyril maintains 200 supply, Gumiho dipping, down to 160. Plus two carapace, about to complete, making Cyril's army that much harder to contend with. More lurkers on the way, plus one mech weapons, big upgrade here, 30 tanks with left with which to use it as Cyril picks out one after another. So far, there's still so many tanks, though, on the back line. Anti-armor missile connects once again, but Cyril doesn't care. He feels like he has the count. A queen leading the charge. Corrosive vials are too damn much. And Cyril breaks through. Gumio picks up the last Marauder. And they're trying to turn it around. Ghost Academy begrudgingly built. Vikings on the way as an option to deal with the Vipers. Yeah, you can really tell Gumio's like, fine, ghosts. Uh, Cyril's still at 200 supply. This has been, uh, even though he bends, certainly. Cyril, one of the most flexible pro gamers I know. We're just gonna leave that statement alone. Uh, but, able to uh, adapt and absorb all these attacks and look no worse for wear. Might lose another hatch here. The start of some damage, but Gumio has been fighting so hard and only now finally gets that hatch. Cyril has a, a fourth and going on a fifth uh, to the north side. 3-3 three, three about to complete three ghosts in production. Gumio still very much in this, but Cyril working his way across the map. One tank will siege. Gets a shot. Blinding cloud negates the rest. Viper wandering through. Pulled back in time. Vikings here. But Gumiho's already lost his ability to really hold this position. Cyril also attacking through with a few lurkers at the third. I don't know how many lurkers. Still a few lurkers on the high ground. Ghost line up some shots. Snipes a roach. The Viper still intact. Lurkers. The production itself being dismantled here is Cyril making mincemeat of Gumiho's army. It's not like Gumiho's gotten run over here, but he's just getting run down. The lurker count is so damn high. Actually, 11 lurkers. Gumiho trying to fight. 
Just not enough ghosts, especially after they get eviscerated. And GG, Cyril. Brings it back. Just. It goes back to the spawning pool. The one he keeps intact. And, uh... Decides it's time to play serious. That game, not particularly... Uh, it, was, it was quite one-sided towards Cyril this time around. Gumiel never really found any opportunity. It looked like that big attack towards the bottom left. Might be it, but Cyril just never really took the day. He kept pulling out the siege tanks that were most dangerous. Yeah, he didn't have enough to get all the tanks. But triage, damage control. Whatever you can do to minimize uh, the splash damage while you put together the right army to crush the rest. And eventually that was enough. And that brings us all tied up. A best of three to this IDSL summer. Put your likes and subscribes together. What was it? Give me 1,500? For Gumiho. Tough game, but definitely not something... I don't think he has to be too worried about that. He tried that kind of uh, more passive macro style. Which is usually a strong suit, but Serral... That gave Cyril more than enough time to dismantle it. God, Cyril is so... Just two fights. That's it, two. Not five, not ten. Just two. That's enough. Bit of an odd wall here. Setting up so he still has space for the add-on by these little doodads. Interesting. Will Cyril do anything about it directly? Got a reactor on the way. So, pretty standard reactor Hellion build, it looks like, though we haven't seen too much. Um, though Marine's still on the table. Definitely a wider variety of Terran vs. Zerg builds lately. As opposed to, it was almost like a religious verse, the reactor Hellion into Banshee for many years. Kind of goes in and out of style. Cyril finding the most success here with Roach Hydra Lurker. Very interesting. I think that is uh, Roach Hydra Lurker works best if your opponent doesn't have near ha doesn't have perfect micro. At risk of sounding somewhat condescending, uh, Gumiho is not Beyond. All right, Beyond does not have. Beyond Strength is outmaneuvering, just essentially freestyling with Micro, which makes roaches incredibly difficult to use because they're never going to find a target because the medevacs are flying around the whole map. But Gumiho is more focused on setting up the right attack and working his way through. But if you are you able to use roaches to, to maintain the economy, which Cyril did, then they're... The tank push just comes too late to do critical economic damage. Cyril going for the rich, the the purple base. All right, I'm working a working title for the rich SP. As is third. Pretty crazy there. Wild. All right, rich Vespi geyser. The greatest attraction of neo humanity. What do we have coming across? So it wasn't reactor Hellions, but instead we're looking at the medevac with a widow mine. There are roaches on the way, but it, with the marines, I think he's going to cancel the base. Whoa, 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 okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Everybody stop. Hammer to <clears throat> He has roach speed. He has a lair done with roach speed on the way. What is this, Sarah? A roach speed rush? It looks like he actually does want that base. Little mind connects. That's crazy. I didn't even realize. It's too busy pontificating to get. Wow, that is some of the quickest road speed. He's going to have it done. Like, just after five minutes. That's that's sometimes in this matchup you don't even get a lair till like six minutes. So that is by far one of the quickest road speed rushes I have ever seen. 
Is there a banshee? There is not. There's no Evo Chambers. It's just Serral building Roach Speed to try to hold on to his base. He's adding some more Roaches on. Uh, obviously, eventually there could be a counterattack, but... Hmm. The rocks in the center and the bone trench have not been taken down. The Bubula still intact, of course. Nothing to break that with. Roaches will scuttle back. Not, not sure about this one. Like, this is quite an odd. We try to take down the rocks. No, oh my god. Don't, don't siege up your tank there, Gumio. Come on. Come on. Don't do that. Oh, it's so obvious. Just do it, Sero. Come on. Kill the rock. Or he just kills the tanks. Yeah, that's more than a bit of an ill-fated attack. Yeah, that, that wasn't remotely enough. Liberator in the main. Quite annoying. But what does Gumio have at home? One siege tank, a handful of marines. Sail already coming across the map. That tank and against some bruised roaches. But if he kills the tank with the ravagers, fires off the biles, gets it. More ravagers on the way. Another tank gonna try to siege up. Sail kind of juggling, shifting his roaches and ravagers to minimize the potential damage. Gumio holding on for now. But Serral has 60 drones. Liberator still going to work. Gets a queen. Cool. That game a bit... About as one side as Moby's strip there as... As... Hmm. Kind of an odd... Uh, it's an odd game. Serral just built a bunch of roaches and eventually ended up working across the map. I don't think Gumio really respecting the danger that roach speed posed. Especially when it came to... How quickly Cyril could get across the map. But. Hmm. <laughs> Cyril now has turned the tables. Three to two. Match point for the finisher. Hopefully Gumi Ho gets a... I, I don't know exactly the scenario, but I think that's a game. You just take a break. Just take a quick... Just be like, alright, give me five. You're allowed to take a bathroom break, which some players will just use. Oliveira. Um, by the way, let's... Jimmy! Oliveira talking about um, how in the I Am Katowice against Rainer, he saw Rainer was so hyped up after he finally won a game that Oliveira decided to uh, use his, his bathroom break at that time. Referencing um, what would Rogue do? To, to, so he didn't he didn't actually need to, but he just kind of splashed some water in his face. By the time he came back, Rainer had calmed down, was no longer super hyped, and Oliver ended up winning the series after that. He kind of turned it back around. So there is some real value, especially in these LAN events, to... I think that's the kind of game you got to change the equation. You got to... something. Because it... it kinda, it's, Gumio did not really even get started there and you don't want that to carry over any further Cyril getting spicy against a command center first he builds six zerglings so ah uh, so the command center first is actually good here because that means the command center was done and can no longer be delayed because obviously it's already completed is that SCV, like, inside the factory? It took no damage that whole time. So, Cyril's pool first, but nothing behind. It's just, just Zergling. So, I think this is an anti-proxy Rex build. But, yeah, so this, this actually ends up working out for Google. Hill. Cyril was setting himself up to defend against potential proxy Rex. Gumiel goes command center first, which is the exact opposite, pretty much. But, uh, I just, okay, I'm just going to simmer. It's going to even out a little. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you've been enjoying the commentary uh, over the last weeks, months, years. Um, thank you for choosing to enjoy the finals with me, at least uh, if it's your first time or another time. And I hope you will continue to. I plan to 
always bring you the best RTS and strategy games. Whatever that looks like. Um, yes, I'm not so subtly referencing Stormgate and the Stormgate videos. I'm still cautiously optimistic. I know a lot of people had mixed opinions on the pre-alpha of, of Stormgate and what they've seen so far. But I do trust Frost Giant and the people of Frost Giant to build a solid competitive RTS. Though we won't be seeing too much of it for some months yet. So we're still going to be enjoying the best StarCraft 2 for sure. Even though I think all the players you're going to see from this tournament and many of the others will at least be giving Stormgate a shot. But at the end of the day, I've said it before, I don't think it would be as popular on YouTube, but I'd watch red squares against blue circles if it was uh, well balanced and not not so much well balanced as well designed so uh continue to look forward to that one way or another will Sarah be as dominant will Gumi Ho show us new strategies will Starcraft 2 consider continue to be the premier real-time strategy game into its second decade find out more over the coming months but until then I'm going to continue casting, because honestly, I don't know what else I would do. I really enjoy it, um, especially these past few months where I've really focused on, on casting. Well, at times, I think it, it'll go pretty well, uh, as opposed to just trying to clock in and, and make sure I cast a series. I spent a lot more time picking the series, though this one was easy enough, um, and, and kind of preparing. So enough about me, and more about mech. Gumi Ho on match point in the ESL Summer Grand Finals. Up against the ropes. One game from defeat. Finally embraces his true nature. More factories on the way. Double armory. It looks like it's gonna be battle mech. As Gumi Ho reaches for the strategy he pioneered the cyclone helium jimmy i can't believe give me a moment we we have something for this yes many years of battle mech hell clones and not that time. Get the beams out of there. The Hellions are the natural. Slaps down an auto turret. Gonna burn through the Zerg lanes. I think this might be Cyril's first big hint of what this is. But the Queen, Brenda, blocks the ramp. And the Hellions will be quarantined. And the sheer Queen count will hunt them down. Trying to slip around the sides. But more Zerglings come out. Minimizing the damage. Splitting the Zerglings well. And honestly, at the end of the day, only seven drones killed. That could have been so much worse. He stopped, he dropped, and he rolled the Hellions there. As Cyril doing everything he needed to do to minimize damage. Losing 10 Hellions for... How many was it? 7 drone kills? Got a lot of Zerglings, but... Not really the damage you're looking for with that many Hellions committed, but there will be more. Roachorn is on the way as Cyril now understands exactly what he's dealing with. Plus one, plus one for both sides. Melee and Carapace for Serral. Plus one mech weapons and armor for Gumiho, who's got his fourth command center in production. Blue Flame Hellions. Magfield Accelerator. That bonus damage on the lockdowns now completed. So both players spinning up into the mid game. Production is fully online. Tech continues. But Hell Clone is not a composition that really sits back. You need to be as far out on the map as you can afford and trading constantly. Though he is adding on more siege tanks, so maybe Gumio not not as interested in that very active skirmish style as building a stronger mech army overall. Because you really do need to be out on the map just constantly going back and forth with the lock-ons to make the Hell Clones work. But it, it is working into a more classical mech style. Blue Flame Hellions into the main, roasting through another half dozen or so drones. Hellbats will be more making it that much harder to dislodge. Roach is here as well. We'll deal with it. Oh, the drones! 
Transferring back. Hell clones out on the map. We've got a raven as well. Help clear the creep. And if he goes for any potential burrow, you got, you got that option on the table. Couple doors. Plus two, plus two. Hellions. More command centers on the way. Full mech produ He's going Thor drop. Well, not so much Thor drops as just having a few medevacs. Understanding that you can use them to heal the the Hellbats, not the Hellions. Just don't question it. Don't question how that works. All right. I don't. I've never understood it, but whatever. Uh, as well as use it to reposition the Thors. Infestors with pathogen glands on the way, as well as Burrow, which. Thor is one of the prime targets for Neural Parasite. And Cyril also understanding that immediately. I think he had it queued up. That's how interested he is in the Neural Parasite there. Matter of fact, what's in there? Hellbat. Never mind. <laughs> uh, Zerglings take out a Tube Toy Depot. Infestor count. A Barrack Scout. Yet again, coming across the map. Hive, Spire, full late game tech. Did he miss? More command centers for Gumiho. Neither side really committing to an outright fight, but it's getting inevitable here as 200 supply is being approached for both sides. How many Thors on the field? Five so far. And got some heavy metal on the way across. Gumi Ho. Cyril even popped over 200 supply for a moment there. Roach is looking to cut off counterattacks, but far too much mech to stop him from killing this hatchery. Maybe try to use some of the broodlings to attack in. Round of corrosive bile knocks out a tank. Roach is cutting off the reinforcements. Hellbats fighting them, but a Thor is more than enough. There are currently eight factories. Single Roach still going to continue to annoy Gumiho. Living up to its name. Adrenal Blands. Greater Spire. More Thors. Plus three mech armor. Where are those? Oh my. Those infestors look so weird. The roaches are... What? I don't know if Cyril noticed. They look so weird. The roaches burrowed underwater. Which, interesting implications there that we can't really explore at the moment as... Okay! Let me borrow those for a moment. Neural Parasite. He uses Interference Matrix to disable one of the infestors, which is technically something you can do. Um... Anti-armor missile softens up some of the surviving Ravagers, but grabs it another Thor. Without ghosts involved, those Thors just proving to be one of the best Zerg units. If you can't beat them, buy them. And, uh, well, not buy them so much as um, convince them to work for you through direct and applied neural parasite. I like the idea. I saw a, a YouTube comment suggestion of Neural Parasite being one-time use, except it kills the Infestor and transfers its consciousness, or whatever, uh, into the unit. Maybe, like, if the unit and the Infestor survive the entire length of the Neural Parasite, it just becomes that unit. I think that would be fun. Uh, though, who cares about balance? It would be fun. But no ghosts yet. At some point, they're just... He's doing the Hellbat drops. This is an old style, but it checks out. Just dropping, dunking Hellbats down in the middle of the fight. So that way they don't die early, but instead... Um, rain down in the midst of the army and potentially kill the infestors as well. You also can't Neural Parasite a medevac with units in it. Not that that's a major concern, the scan. He spots out the infestors, but he doesn't really have the range. Just drops on top. Gumio, but the sheer physical biomass of the Roach Ravager prevented him from dropping. But overall, 
swords are blasting their way through. Kumail adding on a fusion core, but I, I seriously doubt it's for battle cruisers. We're gonna have advanced ballistics here added on. Still no ghost academy. Roaches and a handful of zerglings working through the SCVs at the third. Oh, the Thor's blasting. Drop it on top, Gumiho, with the most fun mech styles. Refuses ghosts, embraces hellbats. But mainlings are crashing through the Thor count. He's dropping them back. He's juggling the Thors into the Metamax. And on their own, some of the most cost-effective units, as long as spellcasters and... All right, well, one of them's gonna... Well, you're gonna have to walk. Robert. Okay, Bobby. Ah. <sighs> The rest of the Thors are picked up. So Gumiho, odd match point, has decided that Thor drops. Oh no. Well, you gotta be a little careful here. He scans, yeah, yeah, there are burrowed infestors there. Thankfully, he can't get the metabacks, but you gotta be very careful of that. <laughs> if he neural parasites a Thor under the metabacks, as Dark has shown us then, uh, well, all you do, you shoot down the medevac and then you kill the thorn. Oh my god, I underestimated his power. B -b -b battle cruisers are already on the way! Though also a prime target for neural parasite, so he's gonna have to be very careful, but Yamato can it! For not the first, but the second time in this series, as Gumio reaches for the ultimate Terran unit. The cruisers. A bold move. Though I am still very concerned about the lack of ghosts. But Gumiho, a man of the people. Oh, his trickle-down mechanomics are what we want to see. I can't believe he's going for the cruisers like this, but... Still no direct answer to the investors. This match is playing out kind of like a show match right now, it, it feels like. As Cyril just... Losing bases, but overall building up a bank. Gumio, with no liberators and no ghosts, continues to be very vulnerable to the neural parasite. Gumio wants to drop the hammer right on top of those infestors, but it's still so far, it's not happening. Flyer Carapace is already on the way. The Battle Cruisers, have they been revealed? I don't know for sure yet. Not that Cyril is completely unprepared for them. Gumio is maxed out. He's got money in the bank. If, if he's able to kill the Infestors once, that gives him an opportunity. This army does not lose to conventional Zerg. It requires... Pretty much Zerg has to borrow as many of these units as possible. The battle cruisers have arrived. Battle cruisers and Thor. Thor's the box art Terran. The Bronze League hero here in the ESL finals. This is these are the top two units we see in Bronze League heroes. Everybody loves the big robots and the big battle cruisers. The investors though are at full energy. Many neural parasites available. The scan. He's trying to. I, I mean. He blasts his way through a couple of them, but he yanks out one! One Neural Parasite! Battle Cruisers jump! Right on top! Is there- well... Um... Has Yama- oh no. Gumio has handed Cyril. One of the best options for dealing with Thors. In the Battle Cruiser. You need the ghosts. You need the ghosts. It's becoming... difficult. As a, a incredible mech army is dismantled when half of the army turns against the other half. With the Zerg to boot. Gumiho, his supply is dipping despite full production. As the battlecruisers are just not cutting it. Cyclones, Hellion being added, Cyril maintaining. He built six more investors. I feel like he, he shied away from the investors, just kind of expecting ghosts eventually. But Gumiho with almost a religious uh, objection here. 
and I can appreciate that but I could also appreciate being able to win the fight and right now very simply while Gumiho's units might win the fight the problem is they're being used against his own units so <sighs> The, the only real options are Liberators and Ghosts. Big hell bad drop. Almost incidentally killing the Infestor here. The Hellbats do not take much damage from anything besides the Roach Ravager. The Zerglings have no hope against it. The Infestors are with the army. Where's the scan? He borrows a Thor. He neural parasites multiple Thors and just blasts his way through. Gonna take another one out. Hold still for me. The battle cruisers are knocked down. The fight has continued for four minutes. Wow, that it's a, it's a bit of a mess in the battle report and how many units have killed what. But Gumiho down to 130 supply, losing 20 more SCVs. He's lost six battle cruisers and 17 Thors. Hellions keeping Cyril busy. The army supply. Oh my god. The corruptors are melting the base. The caustic spray and pray. Thors working their way through on the left. Gumio fighting a delaying action here. He's running out of money in the bank. Cyril still maintains near 200 supply. The finisher looking to take home and reassert his dominance in StarCraft II. He was hamstrung by Zergs in I Am Katowice, the World Championship, which did open up that incredible story of Oliveira, able to take it home. But here we see, while Gumiho was able to get a couple incredibly exciting and dramatic games. Cyril has has asserted himself. He's warmed up the machine. <sighs> Sound understanding. But I feel I feel he he only he minimized his infestor count. Cyril's never wanted to just build mass spellcaster. He gets what he needs and no more. But if Gumio's not going to build ghosts, Cyril's going to teach him a lesson. Potentially a tournament-winning lesson. There is no stopping the Zerg army. Especially when it can borrow your best units. The Roach Ravager crashing through. More siege tanks down. Gumio barely able to mine from anywhere. Handful of battle cruisers over to the left flank. There are no infestors here to stop them. The battle cruiser is the last bastion of Gumiho. If you get enough of them, then maybe you can turn it all around. If you get enough to take out the infestors and ruin the rest. Gumiho's army supply is still pretty healthy. Everything else, not so much. 14 corruptors, 18 corruptors on the way. Plus one, plus two against three, three battle cruisers. Couple queens roast it. As Cyril doesn't actually have that many minerals in the bank here. Though he's building a very, very direct army for dealing with this. Eight infestors, dozens of corruptors. The battle cruisers line up the Yamatos. They will actually get most of the shots off. He loses the infestors, but now the corruptors come in. And the anti air just simply is not there. The corruptors flanking and blasting apart the cruisers. The lock ons aren't remotely enough. The jump isn't quick enough. The Corruptors get away with murder. Gumiho trying to drag this into chaos and actually doing an okay job so far. The army supplies are still pretty close to even. Without the Neural Parasite, the mech army, any piece of it, can be incredibly cost effective. But Fungal lines up the corrosive vials alongside it. Corruptors actually getting caught. Gumio putting a ton of effort in, making it work, making it happen so far. 
The Infestors on their own against Cyclones. Battlecruiser is still intact, but the Fungal may eventually knock it down alongside the Bile. Serral, by the way, he actually took the gold base. He took down, did the Rube Goldberg machine of taking down the rocks, destroying the watchtower, destroying the rocks, and opening up the base. And that may be the deciding factor. Kumiho has managed to drag this into a scrap fest here, which is exactly how you need to play this battle mech style. But unfortunately, it may be too little and too late. The Cyclones lock onto the hatchery, but the infestor count is too damn high. Of one good fungal, what could decide this entire tournament now. Gumiho still scra- he, he does not tap out early. He's tenacious. Especially after some of the games in this series. Definitely don't tap out early, but... Neural Parasite on a couple- three of the clones on the front. That means no lock-ons. Tries to drop the Hellbats, but the corrosive Biles, it's not enough! The finisher has returned! The greatest StarCraft II player of all time! Four to two. And honestly, I, I wouldn't have been surprised at a 4-0 Gumiho putting up an epic fight, giving the people what they want. But, unfortunately, Serral, still a powerhouse, still nearly undefeated in Non-Zerg versus Zerg, and showing why it's still considered the best of the best. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. This is one of the most enjoyable finals. Uh, I've seen, especially this year, but Gumiho fighting, but it's still Serral. It's still Serral at the end of the day. So thank you for watching. 1,500 likes, and, uh, well, okay, we're gonna kiss. Uh, it doesn't matter either way. But thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. That'd be awesome. If you made it this far, get your audio cast most days of the week. Uh, otherwise... Thank you to ESL for putting on another great event. Congratulations to Serral. One of the things I've said most in StarCraft 2, but it remains true. Good luck, have fun. I hope I made a chunk of your day a little bit better. Thank you for watching. Stay chill.